Principle of Accounting Chapter 6 Inventories Learning Objectives Discuss how to classify and determine inventory. Apply inventory cost flow methods and discuss their financial effects. Indicate the effects of inventory errors on the financial statements. Explain the statement presentation and analysis of inventory. Discuss how to classify and determine inventory. In a manufacturing company, some inventory may not yet be ready for sale. As a result, manufacturers usually classify inventory into three categories. Fine niched goods, work in process, and raw materials. Finished goods inventory is manufactured items that are completed and ready for sale. Work in process is that portion of manufactured inventory that has been placed into the production process but is not yet complete. Raw materials are the basic goods that will be used in production but have not yet been placed into production. For example, Caterpillar classify as earth moving tractors completed and ready for sale as fine niche goods. It classify as the tractors on the assembly line in various stages of production as work in process. The steel, glass, tires, and other components that are on hand waiting to be used in the production of tractors are identified as raw materials. Illustration 6 1 shows an adapted excerpt from Note 7 of Caterpillar's annual report. Apply inventory cost Florida A methods and discuss their financial effects. For example, assume that Crivet's TV company purchases three identical 50-inch TVs on different dates at costs of $720, $750, and $800. During the year, Crivet sold two sets at $1,200 each. These facts are summarized in illustration 6 to 3. Cost of goods sold will differ depending on which two TVs the company sold. For example, it might be $1,470, $720, one $750, or $1,520, $720, $1,800, or $1,550, $750, $1,800. In this section, we discuss alternative costing methods available to Krivitz. Specific identification if Krivitz can positively identify which particular units it sold and which are still in ending inventory, it can use the specify C identify cation method of inventory costing. For example, if Krivitz sold the TVs it purchased on February 3rd and May 22nd, then its cost of goods sold is $1,520, $720, $1,800, and its ending inventory is $750. See illustration 6 to 4. Using this method, companies can accurately determine ending inventory and cost of goods sold. If Krivitz can positively identify which particular units it sold and which are still in ending inventory, it can use the specify C identify cation method of inventory costing. For example, if Krivitz sold the TVs it purchased on February 3rd and May 22nd, then its cost of goods sold is $1,520, $720, $1,800, and its ending inventory is $750. Using this method, companies can accurately determine ending inventory and cost of goods sold. Specify C Identify Cation requires that companies keep records of the original cost of each individual inventory item. Historically, Specify C Identify Cation was possible only when a company sold a limited variety of high unit cost items that could be identified clearly from the time of purchase through the time of sale. Examples of such products are cars, pianos, or expensive antiques. Today, barcoding, electronic product codes, and radio frequency identification cation make it theoretically possible to do, specify C identify cation with nearly any type of product. The reality is, however, that this practice is still relatively rare. Instead, rather than keep track of the cost of each particular item sold, most companies make assumptions, called Cost Florida OW assumptions, about which units were sold. Cost flow assumptions cost flow assumptions because specific identification is often impractical, other cost flow methods are permitted. 
These differ from specific identification in that they assume flows of costs that may be unrelated to the physical flow of goods. There are three assumed cost flow methods. 1. First in. Phi RST out. FIFO. 2. Last in. Phi RST out. LIFO. 3. Average cost. First in, first out, FIFO, the first in, first out, FIFO, method assumes that the earliest goods purchased are the FI RST to be sold. FIFO often parallels the actual physical flow of merchandise. That is, it generally is good business practice to sell the oldest units first. Under the FIFO method, therefore, the costs of the earliest goods purchased are the FI RST to be recognized in determining cost of goods sold. This does not necessarily mean that the oldest units are sold first, but that the costs of the oldest units are recognized first. The last in, first out, LIFO, method assumes that the latest goods purchased are the first to be sold. LIFO seldom coincides with the actual physical flow of inventory. Exceptions include goods stored in piles, such as coal or hay, where goods are removed from the top of the pile as they are sold, under the LIFO method. The costs of the latest goods purchased are the first to be recognized in determining cost of goods sold. Average cost The average cost method allocates the cost of goods available for sale on the basis of the weighted average unit cost incurred. The average cost method assumes that goods are similar in nature. Illustration 6 to 10 presents the formula and a sample computation of the weighted average unit cost financial statement and tax effects of cost flow methods income statement effects to understand why companies might choose a particular cost florida our method let's examine the effects of the different cost florida our assumptions on the financial statements of houston electronics the condensed income statements in illustration 6 to 13 assume that Houston sold its 550 units for $18,500, had operating expenses of $9,000, and is subject to an income tax rate of 30%. Note the cost of goods available for sale, $12,000, is the same under each of the three inventory cost Florida our methods. However, the ending inventories and the costs of goods sold are different. This difference is due to the unit costs that the company allocated to cost of goods sold and to ending inventory. Each dollar of difference in ending inventory results in a corresponding dollar difference in income before income taxes. For Houston, an $800 difference exists between FIFO and LIFO cost of goods sold. Indicate the effects of inventory errors on the financial statements. Income statement effects under a periodic inventory system. Both the beginning and ending inventories appear in the income statement. The ending inventory of one period automatically becomes the beginning inventory of the next period. Thus, inventory errors affect the computation of cost of goods sold and net income in two periods. The effects on cost of goods sold can be computed by Phi RST entering incorrect data in the formula in illustration 6 to 15 and then substituting the correct data. Over the two years, though, total net income is correct because the errors offset each other. Notice that total income using incorrect data is $35,000, $22,000, $113,000. Which is the same as the total income of $35,000 using correct data. Also note in this example that an error in the beginning inventory does not result in a corresponding error in the ending inventory for that period. The correctness of the ending inventory depends entirely on the accuracy of taking and costing the inventory at the balance sheet date under the periodic inventory system. Explain the statement presentation and analysis of inventory. Companies apply LCM to the items in inventory after they have used one of the cost Florida OW methods. Specify C identify CAT ION, FIFO, LIFO, or average cost to determine cost. Under the LCM basis, market is defined net as current replacement cost, not selling price. For a merchandising company, Current replacement cost is the cost of purchasing the same goods at the present time from the usual suppliers in the usual quantities. 
Inventory turnover measures the number of times on average the inventory is sold during the period. Its purpose is to measure the liquidity of the inventory. The inventory turnover is computed by dividing cost of goods sold by the average inventory during the period. Unless seasonal factors are significant, average inventory can be computed from the beginning and ending inventory balances. For example, Walmart reported in its 2014 annual report a beginning inventory of $43,803 million, an ending inventory of $44,858 million, and cost of goods sold for the year ended January 31, 2014, of $358,069 million. The inventory turnover formula and computation for Walmart are shown below. LCM and inventory turnover The lowest value for each inventory type is gas $79,000, wood $250,000, and pellet $101,000. The total inventory value is the sum of these amounts, $430,000. Determine the inventory turnover and days in inventory for 2016 and 2017. Discuss the changes in the amount of inventory, the inventory turnover and days in inventory, and the amount of sales across the two years. Solution Apply the Inventory Cost Florida A methods to perpetual inventory records. What inventory cost Florida our methods can companies employ if they use a perpetual inventory system? Simple, they can use any of the inventory cost Florida our methods described in the chapter. To illustrate the application of the three assumed cost Florida our methods, FIFO, LIFO, and average cost, we will use the data shown in illustration 6A1 and in this chapter for Houston Electronics Astro Condensers. First in, first out, FIFO, under perpetual FIFO, the company charges the cost of goods sold the cost of the earliest goods on hand prior to each sale. Therefore, the cost of goods sold on September 10th consists of the units on hand January 1st and the units purchased April 15th and August 24th. Illustration 6A2 shows the inventory under a FIFO method perpetual system, last in, first out, LIFO, under the LIFO method using a perpetual system, the company charges to cost of goods sold the cost of the most recent purchase prior to sale. Therefore, the cost of the goods sold on September 10th consists of all the units from the August 24th and April 15th purchases plus 50 of the units in beginning inventory. Illustration 6A3 shows the computation of the ending inventory under the LIFO method. Average cost The average cost method in a perpetual inventory system is called the moving average method. Under this method, the company computes a new average after each purchase. By dividing the cost of goods available for sale by the units on hand, the average cost is then applied to 1. the units sold to determine the cost of goods sold and 2. the remaining units on hand to determine the ending inventory amount. Illustration 6A4 shows the application of the moving average cost method by Houston Electronics. Computations of the moving average unit cost are shown after Illustration 6A4. Describe the two methods of estimating inventories. Gross Profit T Method The Gross Profit T Method estimates the cost of ending inventory by applying a Gross Profit T rate to net sales. This method is relatively simple but effective. Accountants, auditors, and managers frequently use the Gross Profit T Method to test the reasonableness of the ending inventory amount. It will detect large errors. To use this method, a company needs to know its net sales, cost of goods available for sale, and gross profit rate. The company then can estimate its gross profit for the period. Illustration 6B1 shows the formulas for using the gross profit method. Example of gross profit method to illustrate. Assume the Kishwaukee company wishes to prepare an income statement for the month of January. Its records show net sales of $200,000, beginning inventory $40,000, and cost of goods purchased $120,000.
In the preceding year, the company realized a 30% gross profit rate. Income statement effects Income statement effects under a periodic inventory system. Both the beginning and ending inventories appear in the income statement. The ending inventory of one period automatically becomes the beginning inventory of the next period. Thus, inventory errors affect the computation of cost of goods sold and net income in two periods. Effects of inventory errors on current year's income statement. So far, the effects of inventory errors are fairly straightforward. Now, though, comes the, at first, surprising part. An error in the ending inventory of the current period will have a reverse effect on net income of the next accounting period. Illustration 6 to 17, page 278, shows this effect. As you study the illustration, you will see that the reverse computation of lower of Castor market illustrate the application of LCM. Assume that Kentucky TV has the following lines of merchandise with costs and market values as indicated. LCM produces the results shown and note that the amounts shown in the FI and AL column are the lower of cost or market amounts for each item. Inventory turnover formula and computation for Walmart For example, Walmart reported in its 2014 annual report a beginning inventory of $43,803 million, an ending inventory of $44,858 million and cost of goods sold for the year end January 31, 2014, of $358,069 million. The inventory turnover formula and computation for Walmart are shown below. LCM and inventory turnover. The lowest value for each inventory type is gas $79,000, wood $250,000, and pellet $101,000. The total inventory value is the sum of these amounts, $430,000. Determine the inventory turnover and days in inventory for 2016 and 2017. Discuss the changes in the amount of inventory, the inventory turnover and days in inventory, and the amount of sales across the two years. Apply the inventory cost Florida A methods to perpetual inventory records. What inventory cost Florida A methods can companies employ if they use a perpetual inventory system simple? They can use any of the inventory cost Florida A methods described in the chapter. To illustrate the application of the three assumed cost Florida A methods, FIFO, LIFO, and average cost, we will use the data shown in illustration 6A1 and in this chapter for Houston Electronics Astro Condensers. Under perpetual FIFO, the company charges to cost of goods sold the cost of the earliest goods on hand prior to each sale. Therefore, the cost of goods sold on September 10 consists of the units on hand January 1 and the units purchased April 15 and August 24. Illustration 6A2 shows the inventory under a FIFO method perpetual system. Under the LIFO method using a perpetual system, the company charges to cost of goods sold the cost of the most recent purchase prior to sale. Therefore, the cost of the goods sold on September 10 consists of all the units from the August 24 and April 15 purchases plus 50 of the units in beginning inventory. Illustration 6A3 shows the computation of the ending inventory under the LIFO method. Describe the two methods of estimating inventories. To use this method, a company needs to know its net sales, cost of goods available for sale, and gross profit rate. The company then can estimate its gross profit T for the period, shows the formulas for using the gross profit method. Assume that Kishwaukee Company wishes to prepare an income statement for the month of January. Its records show net sales of $200,000, beginning inventory $40,000, and cost of goods purchased $120,000. In the preceding year, the company realized a 30% gross profit rate. It expects to earn the same rate this year. Given these facts and assumptions, Kishwaukee can compute the estimated cost of the ending inventory at January 31 under the gross profit method as follows. Retail Inventory Method Formulas 